Hey YouTube, David Staples, and today I'm coming back to you to talk about the CompTIA Security Plus exam. This is going to be exam number SY0-401. So I've got the objectives pulled up here and figured I'd come talk to you guys a little bit about it. I know that a lot of the students in the class a lot of times have questions about uh, you know how difficult is the exam and what kind of things are on there and you know how many minutes do I have to take the exam? Uh, you know, what, how many questions are on there? What does it cost? Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some of this stuff and make sure that you're familiar with what you can expect to see uh, when you actually are looking at taking the exam. So the CompTIA Security Plus, the current version is the SY0-401. Uh, the previous version was the SY0-301. And on the exam, there are going to be a total of uh, six domains worth of information that it covers. Um, and so the maximum number of questions that you should have is 90 questions. Now I say should uh, because I have seen exams where I know one of mine in the past had a maximum of 80 questions, but I had 83 questions on the exam. So it is possible that some of those questions are going to be what we call seated questions. Uh, those questions basically don't count against you, they don't count for you. They're basically just questions to see whether or not those questions should be included as a scored question on a future exam. Now, those questions are not marked, so you want to be very careful in how you're answering every question. You don't want to make an assumption that one of the questions isn't going to count. You do want to answer every question as if it's going to count for or against your score. Uh, so what type of questions will you see on the exam? So you'll see a couple of different types of questions, one being multiple choice course, you know, A, B, C, or D, or A, B, C, D, or E. Uh, you'll also see some that say select two, select three. Uh, as far as I've seen, there's not a select all that apply, which is always a nice thing. Uh, I know that in some exams where I've had select all that apply, it doesn't tell you how many to choose. I hate those types of questions, personally. So thankfully, there are no questions like that on this particular exam. Now, you'll also see what we call performance-based questions. Now the way that they define performance-based questions actually comes in a couple of different ways. One being that you might have some drag and drop. So over on the left-hand side, you'll actually have a list of uh, maybe five, six, seven different things that are going to uh, be your options to choose from. And then over on the right-hand side, you'll have to basically put those in order or you'll have to choose you know, three or four out of those and just basically drag them from the left over to the right-hand side. Now the other type of performance question is actually going to be more like a simulation. So for instance, let's just say that you could have a firewall simulation where essentially they give you a kind of a mock firewall type setup and you have to know things like you know various different port numbers, you'll need to know uh, TCP and UDP uh, protocols for certain different services, you'll want to know which services run on those individual ports, uh, you'll want to know whether or not, or you'll want to figure out from the description whether or not you need to allow or deny a certain uh, service. Uh, so there's those types of things, and then there's also perhaps some diagrams where you might actually have to click on uh, a couple of different items in there and see some information that they give you, maybe some log files or something like that, and be able to determine what exactly is going on in that scenario, and possibly even offer a solution to it. And then of course you've also got some where maybe it'll give you a net network diagram and you have to drag some devices around and actually show, okay, well this is where I would put a firewall, this is where I would put uh, something like an anti-spam uh, system. Here's where I would actually put, uh, you know, maybe a proxy server or a router or a, a web application firewall. So those are different types of performance-based questions that you might actually see on the exam. So most people, from what I've heard, actually get all of the performance-based questions at the beginning of the exam. Now that's not to say that you will, obviously, but that most people do. So you might want to be prepared that when you go in, the very first thing you might see are these performance-based questions. Uh, so let's see what else. So recommended experience. So uh, CompTIA does recommend that you have at least two years of experience in IT administration with a focus on security before taking this exam or before taking a course for the CompTIA Security Plus. Uh, I can definitely recommend uh, having at least some, some experience or maybe even having your Network Plus coming into this. Uh, there possibly might be some questions regarding things like subnetting, uh, VLANs, you know, it's very difficult to learn how to secure a network if you're not really familiar with how networks actually work in the first place, right? So uh, definitely would be a good idea to go for that Network Plus first if you're not really all that comfortable with networking. Uh, make sure that you're comfortable with those concepts. And then, of course, once you have 
uh, proven that knowledge, then go ahead and move on up to the Security Plus. Uh, but I would definitely start with that lower level exam and, and work your way on up. So what do you need to score in order to pass? So uh, this is actually scored on a scale of 100 to 900, and you need a passing score of, of 750 or better. Uh, so it's if we were to work that out, assuming that everything was not weighted, assuming that every question was weighted the same, uh, that works out to a little over 80%. Uh, however, uh, we can make the assumption, based upon some of the scores that we've seen, uh, that the questions are weighted. Some of them are going to be worth more points than others. So uh, don't just assume that because you are comfortable with you know, X number of questions uh, and that you've answered those, that you're going to pass. You do want to answer every question to the best of your ability. And don't give up just halfway through the exam or three quarters of the way through the exam. So, you know, I just can't do this anymore. I, I think I've got a passing score anyways. Uh, CompTIA, of course, is very secretive about how they actually score these things, so we need to treat every question as if it was the only question on the exam. Make sure that you're actually going to get that passing score. Uh, so I mentioned that the topics that are covered in this exam are covered in six domains. So those six domains are going to be network security, which counts for 20% uh, of the exam. Uh, the second domain is going to be compliance and operational security, which counts for 18% of the exam. Uh, topic number three is going to be threats and vulnerabilities, which counts for 20% of the exam. Uh, you've also got application data and host security, which is 15%. Access control and identity management, which is another 15%. And then the last one, cryptography, is going to be 12%. Uh, so those are your six domains that are covered by the CompTIA Security Plus exam. Uh, so again, there's all sorts of different resources out there that you can use to study from, to practice with. Uh, and of course, I do teach the CompTIA Security Plus certification as well, so uh, if you're interested in taking classes, certainly feel free to message me, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to send you some information on some of those classes or contact that you can speak with. Uh, I don't really do sales, so uh, if you'd like to speak with one of our people that actually do all the scheduling and, and sales and everything, happy to put you in contact with them. But uh, in the meantime, if you're about to go take the exam, uh, or if you're in one of my classes and just couldn't remember this information and you're re-watching this video, uh, definitely feel free to uh, reach out anytime you've got any questions. Uh, certainly love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how you did uh, once you take the exam. So look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Uh, good luck on your exam and take care as always. Love you guys. Oh, and one last thing. Be sure to click that subscribe button. It helps me grow my channel. The bigger the channel grows, the more opportunities that I have to share this and other types of information, as well as offer new things throughout the channel. So uh, you definitely help me out by clicking that subscribe button. As well, click the like or thumbs up button. And if you've got some friends that are taking the exam, share it with them. And one last thing, leave some comments down below. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you tuning in and look forward to hearing how you did. You guys take care.